Hi guys, Jay Smith here. Welcome to the Ask Golf Nut channel and welcome to Mizuno Pro 243 against JPX9234. Forge. Now I've already done the video on the 245 versus the 923 Forge. And yes, they are the same lofted at 30 degrees, although that is where the similarities finish. These two, these are like brother and sister, although they are from different ranges. You've obviously the JPX and the MP, the Mizuno Pro. And they have the same metal. They're both made of 4120 chromoly. I've got the seven irons here and they do change. They do go from the 4120 grain flow chromoly into the grain flow forge 1025E that we all know and love. And that transitions from eight iron to gap wedge and four to seven in these. Now they've both got micro slot and effectively what that is, is to enable the whole face to flex some more and gain a bit extra ball speed. The four to five iron in the the Pro 243 has a bigger, wider, longer micro slot. And of course, when you go into your four and five irons, your long, hard to hit irons, you need as much help in ball speed as you possibly can get. And of course, on the 243, you have got that copper underlay and that copper underlay is there to soften the noise. So although these are made of the same steel, it will be interesting to see which one feels better or sounds better out of these two. Again, when it comes to forgiveness, I will whack these all over the face. We'll get the simulator on the sec and hit these into a green, see how they look and feel. But then I'll be doing the testing of all around the face to see which one of these two are more forgiving because obviously you've got slight size difference between these two the 923 slightly bigger and of course has got a lot of that meat on the toe and of course the pro 243 is a mizuno pro iron so it's slightly different size etc right let's go get the simulator on and let's go see how these two compare so similarity is now on. I have changed the data sets for the JPX 9234s of which I have in my hand. We'll do this one first and do the 243. Afterwards, we're at Glenfora Golf Course, hole six is a par three of 185 yards. On a normal review, and I've done full reviews of these on my channel, when it comes to say the 243, which is the most recent one, I hit that at three different swing speeds as far as I can recollect, 70 miles an hour, 80 miles and 90 miles an hour to see how the golf clubs work when you start moving speed around. Now in a comparison like this, there's no point in me doing these at three different swing speeds. What we're looking for is there a relative difference between the two. And so if you swing slower, I'm going to be doing this test around about 90 miles an hour or so. And if you swing slower, whatever difference, if there's a difference between these two, there will be the same difference, just uh, a relatively smaller amount. Again, if you swing faster, whatever difference, it will be relatively larger amount. But the whole idea is just see the differences, if any. The JPEX 923's top line it is thicker, actually, than the top line of the 243. Although because of the chrome barring you've got around the head of the 923 Forge, it physically doesn't look as big as it actually is. It is, I think, two or so millimeters thicker than the 243, but yeah. No difference to the sole thickness. If you look at the sole thickness, because of that chrome barring, again, it does not look as big as it actually is. When it comes to blade length, though, yes, the 243 is smaller. And so when you look at this one down by the golf ball, you can see that it's got a decent lump down by the golf ball. And also there is offset there, but actually we compare this to the rest of the 923 range, apart from the tour that is, the offset is fairly minimal. Right, let's go give this one a hit to see how it feels. Remember this, same metal, but no copper underlay. That's a turny one to start with. Slightly high, I'm trying to move my path. And sometimes my face works and sometimes it doesn't. Club half 1.2 from the inside, there you go, face is closing, that's why it's going left. Uh, 37 yards in the air, 49 degrees descent angle, 48.6 degrees. It's working fairly well as a slight missed green, we'll call that, left edge. But 188 yards total, you'd take that one all day long. The seven iron has still got that punchy nature, but because of deflection, loft is as much as you're gonna get when it comes to a chromoly. You're not gonna get the full effect of the chromoly like you would do if you went to a four or five iron because of deflection. But uh, yeah, feeling is distinctly still not quite, shall we say, uh, blade-like, but that's obviously to be expected. Not bad whatsoever, fractionally high, fractionally toe, but decent here. Full speed now I am, 91.7, fully warmed up. That's a decent carry. Uh, 183, 1.36 efficiency, two mil high, four mil toe, yeah, you can feel it. Um, but going 36 yards in the air and 49 degrees ascent angle, or 36.5, that'll probably round it to 37, but doing well, absolutely doing well. And this is what this JPX923 Forge does. It transitions, a great transitional club for people that are going from a game improvement golf club, but want to get something a little bit more players-like 
but don't want to get rid of the forgiveness and don't want to get rid of the help going forward and distance, etc. Again, obviously different lofted, only two degrees or so. It'll be interesting to see if I can get the uh, 243 here. I might actually have to move the T forward because I'm pretty certain I won't be able to get the 243 to 185 yards. All right, let's go give it another hit. He does look very nice down by the golf ball. The blade lengths are slightly bigger than 243, but yeah. Oh, that's left. That's left. <sighs> get in the bunker, get in the bunker. Go on, get in the bunker. Lovely, I'll take that. Face is zero, path is left. And look at that, strike out the heel as well. So again, that's me going back a little bit. I need to work on my path moving slightly more from the inside because again I'm getting that flight at the moment where face is doing what it should do but then it goes left. It's not bad though 34 yards in the end 47 degrees ascent angle still carrying 183 so it's doing well it's just a case of obviously that is not the direction I want it to go but I'm glad it's gone in the bunker because I'd rather be in the bunker than be in the rough. One last go because I can't finish on that one because that is terrible. Let's see if we can actually go right the pin shall we? <laughs> Let's go flick over then to the 243. Not the best hit in the world, but a better uh, a line, definitely. Slightly low heel, but that's a much better result. There you go, path is a bit better now. 0.4 from the inside, 0.3 open, and seven mil heel, five mil low. So not, again, not ideal, but pretty good. 35 yards in the air and 48 degrees ascent angle, even 181 yards, you saw how well that is stopping into a green. Now, let's go flick over to the 243, and let's go see how the 243, with that copper underlay, and see if it makes any difference to feel. Okay, data set has now changed. We are red line possibly, but we are on the Pro 243. Now I haven't changed the distance, and so it will be interesting to see if this 32 degree loft to seven line can get there. I don't think it will. I think we will be bouncing short of the green and then bouncing on, but we'll see. Now the 243, yes, it is slightly weaker lofted than that of the JPX 923 forged, and the fact that obviously the loft caps will be blended differently because of the different lofts. Top lines on this one, even though these are, they are smaller, four mil against six and a half mil, I think it was, but when it comes to sole thickness, you'd be hard pressed to see the difference between the sole thickness between the two, but blade lengths, yes, you can distinctly see a difference in blade lengths. This one is smaller. So if you go down by the golf ball, you can distinctly tell you're using a smaller golf club now. And when it comes to offset, if I had to pick a winner in the offset world of winning, I'd have to say that the 243 wins because it just looks slightly less offset. But again, that's winning on the basis I want less offset. But if you want more offset, there you go. Right, let's go give this one a hit. Remember, this is copper underlay, so it'll be interesting to see what the, or hear what the uh, sound difference is. A lovely feeling. You can definitely tell it's got copper underlay. And do you know what? It's done well to get there. I'm surprised that's got the distance. 0.3 across, 0.7 open. I need to get that feeling of more drawery. But as soon as I try and push the feeling too much, my strike goes out the window. Five mil hill, three mil low, not bad strike really. 37 yards in the air, 50 degrees ascent angle. At 177, you can see there's a distinct difference. When I say distinct, probably five yards or so. But feel wise, yeah, you can distinctly feel that this is got copper underlay. It does sound and feel nicer than the 923 forged. That's so far left. That's got to carry. <laughs> that's, my path was so bad, get in the bunker. Thank you, yep. That's across and face closed. There you go, across and face closed. I so need to get my path sorted out. The strike was not bad and there you go, 35 yards in the air, 48 degrees ascent angle. You won't complain on that one whatsoever, but uh, yeah. Right, let's go give that one another go. Let's try and not go left. But feeling wise, again, it just feels lovely. It really does. That was my fault, not the golf clubs. Better, fractionally healy, shall we call it? I'll say 12, because <laughs> you could feel that one. Trying to move my path again. Path 0.3 from the inside, yeah, that's it, and then face slightly closed. Uh, 14 mil heel rather than 12, I was two mil out. Uh, but 36 yards in the air and 49 degrees ascent angle, you can see my strikes moving as I'm trying to change my path. You can understand if I'm trying to move it too much, I'll struggle throughout the window. Uh, but it's working well. I mean, it does, even from 14 mil heel, it's working well, considering that's not ideal. 
and you can feel it, the feedback you get from these. Now, when it comes to feedback, there's a difference between feel and feedback. Feel is what you have when you hit the golf ball. Feedback is what the golf club effectively, or the sound tells you where you hit it on the face. And I have got more finite feedback, obviously, with the Pro 243 than I have the JPX 923, but that can only be because of the copper, because of the sound. It can't be for anything else because they're made of the same metal. They're both within reason fairly similarly lofted. They've both got micro slots. They've both got the same technology. It's just that one's in a smaller package with that uh, copper underlay as opposed to a larger package without any. Right, give it another go. Go on, let's go for the toe this time. That's a better shot. That's a better shot. Path moving, face releasing. And there we go. Not bad whatsoever, take that. Feels nice. 1.1 from the inside, there we go. 0.8 closed. And that's my feeling of hitting it slightly off the toe and it's three mil heel, two mil low. 37 yards in the air and 50 degrees ascent angle and the distance of 177. So yeah, you can see there's a distinct difference in, in uh, carry distance between the two. There's five or so yards between, five, six maybe, between an, a like for like hit Let's go get off the um, Glenfora golf course. Let's go on the range. You wouldn't have to see that, I'll take it off camera. Let's whack these both loads of times to get a proper average rather than three or four shots a piece to see what difference there are in flight and control, peak heights, ascent angles and that idea. And then we'll also hit these all around the face to see if you're gonna miss the middle, and I've missed a few times already, but what happens when you hit all over the face, which one is more forgiving than the other? Let's go see how both of these got on when I hit them all over the face to see which one's more forgiving than the other. As you can see, you've got all the information up on the screen as best I can. We'll look at ball data first between the 923 Forged and the Pro 243. Ball speed, 122.2 against 120. So there is an advantage of 2.2 miles an hour um, of the 923 over that of the 243. Now, if you launch angle, 18.4 degrees to 20.3. The 243 is launching 1.9 degrees higher on average than the 923 Forge, which is mighty impressive considering you think there's only two degrees of static loft between these two. Now, launch and loft are not linear. You don't deliver, say, 30 degrees of loft with your 7-iron and actually launch the golf ball at 30 degrees. You always launch it lower than the amount of loft that you deliver. So the fact that he's launching it two degrees, even though there is two degrees of static loft difference between these two, is mighty impressive. Uh, spin, you're looking at 5,200 against 5,450, so 250 RPM. Peak height, 35 against 37, and I think that was 1.7 yards, I think, but because they round it, it's two, but that's, yeah, 1.7 yards or so. And descent angles, 47.3 against 49 degrees. So you'd have to say, when it comes to functionality of flight, which one is more functional out of these two? You'd have to say Pro 243. It goes higher in the air. It also descends deeper. And if you look at the carry, 177 to 172, there is only a five yard difference between these two. Again, you could say that, well, there's two degrees aloft and that's not far off of that. For me, I would say two degrees for me is half a golf club. And effectively that's around about six and a half to seven seven yards depending, and there's five, so we're not that much difference. Clubhead speed, let's go to have a look at the difference between these two. 90 miles an hour, 90 miles an hour, no difference whatsoever. Efficiency is 1.36 to 1.33. And again, I suppose this is so close to it, and if you went into all the calculations, I would say actual difference between these two is around about 0.02. Um, but because of the amount of shots that you hit and there's slight blurring here and there, it's within a very small amount, but it's, yeah. Attack angle 3.8 to 3.6 within 0.2, club path within 0.4, face to path is less than a, a degree, lies is a degree, loft, most important thing, 1.9 degrees in it. So there's two degrees of static loft, I have delivered 1.9 degrees of dynamic loft. So within 0.1 of a degree, I have delivered exactly the same as what the manufacturer's state that they want to be delivered for these kind of golf clubs. Two mil toe, one mil low, and one mil toe, two mil low for the strikes. As you can see, very, very similar between the two. Let's go have a look at the ball and club compare because this is the graphical representation of literally what we've just been talking about. And some people find it better to have a look at something visually than see streams of data. And so you can see there the Forge and the Pro, the Fuchsia against the Red, and you can see the Pro 243 just launches higher, peak heights higher, and descends steeper than the pink, purple, Fuchsia, whatever it is. And 
five yards. And again, I suppose if you need that five yards and from this, it's 47.3 degrees, I think it was, it's absolutely functional. And the six iron would be absolutely functional. And the chances are the five iron would be absolutely functional as well. So if you're looking for raw distance and you need some extra punch, there you go, 923 force will give it to you. If you're looking for ultimate, flight control going into a green and stuff like that then i would say absolutely for a penalty of only five yards definitely go for the pro 243 but kind of different people will want different things right let's go see how they work out the middle because obviously when it comes to measuring forgiveness you need to know how well one works out of the middle to be able to monitor what happens when you get the drop off of when you don't hit the middle maxed out here for the 9234s we have 1.37 Within two millimeters of strike, 1.37. If you have a look at the 243 maxed out against okay, one mil low, zero mil heel against two mil, it is very, very small. And it's exactly the same loft, 26.7, 26.7, and 1.35. There's the 0.02 difference that I see when it comes to perfectly hit shots between them. There is a 0.02 difference between these two. Now remember, 0.02, but at the same loft. The first data set was with the manufacturers understand there should be two degrees of um, loft, loft, whether it be dynamic or static, it doesn't matter. There should be two degrees of loft difference between these two. That's what I delivered. And you saw the 0.03 difference. Now I'm loft matching. I'm delivering a golf club as best I can do loft matching and trying to hit them in the same spot. Difficult, but doable with enough shots. And you can see there's a 0.02 difference, even, even, with the same loft. So technically the winner goes to the um, 923 4s because it is delivering more efficiency, more bang for your buck than the, the 243. It is relatively small, but it's still there. That's the whole idea of doing it. Um, let's go for a heel, 10 mil heel. By the way, guys, if you're constantly hitting off the heel, that's your normal spot and that's where you live on the heel of the golf club, do not buy a golf club on the basis of how forgiving it is off the heel, because if you're regularly hitting the heel of your golf club, there is not much room there before you are hosel rocking it. And you really need to make sure that you try and shift your miss towards the toe rather than the heel. Just never miss in the heel. But for measuring point of view, we're talking 10 mil heel and it's 1.36 and 10 mil heel again, one mil high and 1.34. There is a difference in um, efficiency between the two and there is 0.9 of a degree difference in loft. That's it between the two. Let's go have a look at low on the face. So we look at 12 mil low, three mil heel on a 923 forge and it's 1.31 against 12 mil low and zero mil toe. So three mil better strike uh, on the 243 at 1.30. Now there is 0.9 of a degree of loft again. And again, I suppose if you were to put that to 25 a piece, then it might go 1.31, you don't know. So the interesting thing is that this is within reason loft matching. Um, there is a very, very small difference between these two. There's very, very small difference between these two. You'd have to say, obviously, one works slightly better off the heel um, than the other. And then when it comes to the low on the face, it is very, very close. Let's go have a look now at the toe performance. This is the 923 forged. 1.34, zero, zero delivery, 24 degrees of loft, 13 mil toe, one mil high. So that's normalized toe miss. This is what everyone hits when it comes to a toe miss. Yeah. If you then go over to 13 mil toe, two mil low, so again, 13 mil again, and a very, very small difference vertically, you've gone from 1.34 to 24 and 24 degrees aloft to within 0.4 of a degree, but it's gone down to 1.32. This is what you're gonna get with a smaller head. So as soon as you have a smaller head, you cannot, unfortunately, you cannot get as much um, stability MOI into a head which is smaller. And when we go into the big toe miss after this one, it will really rear its head. The differences between the 923 forge and the 243. Basically this, if you're gonna move around the middle or anywhere near the middle, the 243 is just as good as the 923 forge. Within reason, it's very small amounts, it's basically just as good. If you start moving around the face though, and this is no different if you hit it extreme heel without shanking it, which is not much room, but if you hit it extreme heel without shanking it, the 923 will win. You go in around the middle, they're both exactly the same as each other. And you could argue on certain points, maybe the 245, uh, 243 two, four, two, four, may actually win, but it's very, very small. Let's go full on toe so to show you what I mean. 23 more toe, two more high. This is a properly properly toe shot. 25 millimeter gross is physically an inch away from middle on an iron, not good. 1.32. Okay, face was shut, 
by one degree. So you have to understand sometimes when you have a face open, obviously you get glancing blows and stuff like that. You want to be more like that. And if you have a face which is closing, sometimes that can artificially increase efficiency is one degree. That's all it is, one degree, 1.32. Let's do the similar thing when it comes to a uh, 243. You hit it 23 mil toe, two mil high, 23 mil toe, two mil high, exactly the same strike, 24.4 degrees, 24.5 degrees, exactly the same amount of loft, and face is closed by 0.2 as one degree close, it's very, very small, but 1.25 efficiency. You can see there that as soon as you pop it out that far, the 243 cries. No, please, it says. Do not hit me out there because that is not somewhere where you want to be hitting a Mizuno Pro iron. And this is what you'll find. So this is sort of conclude the differences between these two. It's very, very simple. You've got the looks difference between a one, obviously is a player's cavity. So it has got the cavity there, but it looks a little bit cleaner. It's a Mizuno Pro, of course it is. You move that to a, a JPX 923 Forge. It looks like a 923 range. So it is a little bit more busy, a little more sharp, a little more angular when it comes to its looks. It's a little more visual tech, etc. They've both got micro slots, which you can't see, but obviously the game improvement iron, the 923 Forge looks more like the game improvement iron. In reality, they, they feel very, very similar with the advantage slightly going to 243. The, the copper underlay does make the 243 sound fractionally nicer, softer, quieter, whatever that will be, feel. Again, some people care, some people don't. And looks obviously is subjective. We've, if you look at top lines, etc., yeah, of course the 243 will win because it's just a smaller. Blade uh, lengths, it's smaller. It looks more of a compact golf club. When you measure it's pure on performance though, this is where they differ. With the static, differences in loft between them, you will find that the 243 actually works really quite well. It launches really well, it spins really well, it goes up really well, it descends really well, and its distance, even though it's shorter than the 923 forged, actually does quite well. If you then obviously flip on its head for the 923, yeah, it, is, it fires it out there, of course it does. And it will get a gain on the 923 forged over the 243 if you choose the 923 forged. As long as you've got enough peak height and as long as you've got enough descent angle, you're going to have the win when it comes to the distance. When it comes to forgiveness, this is no different. If you start moving around on a Mizuno Pro iron to the extremes of 23 millimeters around the toe, you should not be looking for a Mizuno Pro iron. That kind of just shows when you do miss it, that if you go to a 923, which is much more down the route of the game improvement iron, you can get away with it. Is it ideal? Of course it's not. And it's going to be a drop off. Of course there will. But you're not going to have the same drop off as you are going to get if you hit a Mizuno Pro iron from that kind of spot, as opposed to a game improvement iron, even though it's kind of player's game improvement iron, but player's distance, whatever the category is. So hope you like the video, guys. If you did, thumbs up. It's a like button. Go on YouTube, like, so do I. Down there is a subscribe button. It's free. It is great for the channel if you could subscribe. So thank you. And next to that is a bell icon. That's a notification bell. If you click that one, that will notify you next time I upload another video. So hope you're well. We'll see you again soon.